In this video, I will be analyzing the costumes in the 2004 film, The Notebook. This film takes place in the 1940s in rural South Carolina, I believe. Before I start, I just wanted to say that I'm going based off what was common for the time and place. Place is super important to note because what people were wearing in 1940s New York City was different than what people were wearing in small town conservative USA. Also, I never want to say that something could have never been worn that way or something always had to be one way and never another way. There are obviously no absolutes in dress history. I'm just going based off what was common for the time. With that being said, let's dive into the mess that are these 1940s costumes in the notebook. Okay, so right off the bat, I see an extra here in a tank top, it looks like, like some sort of tank top dress. And her hair looks like it's um, like 2000s sultry waves. I, yeah, that's obviously not off to, not off to a great start. I don't think you would see that in 1940s rural USA. In the next scene, Allie's friend Sarah is wearing a play suit. Play clothes did become popular in the 1940s and were a fashionable category for those who could afford occasion-specific clothing. In the 1940s, generally women would wear dresses and suits and their work clothes. That's where they would generally spend their money, especially in a time of rationing and austerity. Play suits were definitely a popular option for the summer. However, they would generally only be seen on the boardwalk, at the beach, maybe in a park. I don't think you would see a play suit in the evening at a carnival. Also, Sarah is wearing pigtails. Pigtails were generally reserved for teens and children, not adults. She looks to maybe be in her 20s, early 20s. So yeah, that's a little odd. So Allie's carnival dress in the opening scene does look to be appropriate. The hem is below the knee. She's wearing a matching jacket, which were super popular in the 1940s. Matching separates really allowed women to have versatility during a time of rationing. So I like that. But one thing to note is that her hair is I think a little bit too long and it's not like structured enough. It's kind of just like messy and loose. And she's a woman of high status. They say that her father has more money than God. So I feel like she wouldn't go out with her hair in that sort of state off to an interesting start here. Next, we have this green dress. Since it is a 1940, dye stuffs and textiles weren't quite reaching shortage levels yet in the United States. So I will definitely give them a pass on the vibrancy and the color. However, as the war progresses, there becomes a shortage of colors. And at one point there's only 15 colors available for textiles and only five colors available for leather shoes. So textile manufacturers made up for the lack of color with the increased offering of prints. That's why sometimes when you see 1940s dresses, they have like crazy prints and you just think like, wow, they wore that? <laughs> But they use these prints to not only make up for the lack of color, but also hide sometimes the subpar quality of the fabric as well. Another thing to note about this dress is that the hem is too short. Allie's dresses would most definitely fall below the knee. Dresses in the 1940s, the majority of them fell below the knee unless you were playing sports, you know, in a play suit at the beach or wearing a bathing suit. And of course, the most glaring problem with this dress is the shoulders. Shoulders need to be padded in order to maintain that, that super super popular square silhouette of the 1940s. The silhouette from 1940 to about 1946 was characterized by square padded shoulders, slim skirts with a slight fullness, and the length would be right below the knees. Various styles of shirtwaist dresses would be worn and matching separates became popular as well because they offered women versatility during a time of rationing. Next, I wanna take a look at her shoes. She's wearing a wedge heel. Wedges actually became very popular in the 1940s. Salvatore Ferragamo invented the orthopedic wedge heel out of cork and raffia in 1936, and it became an instant hit. Ferragamo was influenced by Italian history when he revived the platform shoes that were last worn during the Renaissance in Venice. Practicality is really what people aimed for from about 1941 to 1945. Walking was also encouraged given that rubber from tires was rationed and they needed to save it for the war effort. Okay, so in the next scene, they're at the movies and I am immediately thrown off by what Sarah is wearing. <laughs> like they really did this character so dirty. She's literally wearing a skirt that is shorter than mini skirts of the 1960s. So that's really interesting. Also, she has this weird fur boa thing around her neck. The 1940s was all about austerity, practicality, and being frugal. I find it hard to believe that someone would be wearing like a fur 
boa in the middle of summer. In the, in the south of all places too. It's just so odd. It definitely looks like something that you would see in the 2000s. Like I could totally see an early 2000s Disney Channel star like wearing this in like a show or movie. That's the worst thing in the whole movie, that, that whole outfit. However, Allie's dress, it looks great. It looks like a rayon printed A-line dress with a matching jacket, very fitting for the time. And I think from what I can see, the hem does sit right below the knee, so points for that. Next is a really short scene where Allie visits Noah at work. I just wanted to note that this dress is way too short. Allie is like a high status lady from the South, from a wealthy, probably conservative family. I highly doubt she would be walking around town in a fitted dress above the knee. It's just not. It's just not accurate, unfortunately. Next is this like purple mixed with print dress. I like the style, but it is a little too tight. The skirt needs to be a bit fuller and the shoulders need to be padded. Next is the famous beach scene. I love the shape of the swimsuit uh, and her headwear. It is very 1940s, no qualms with that. However, it looks like it is made out of modern bathing suit material. It doesn't look like rayon or cotton, especially when wet. You can tell when something is like clothing material when it's wet versus bathing suit material. Her next swimsuit though in the next scene is much, much better. This is definitely a quintessential 1940s swimsuit and it looks like it might be printed cotton. Color isn't too bright. I really like the pattern. No problems with that at all. However, when the camera pans up and you see her friend, Sarah, once again, she is literally wearing a Victoria's Secret underwire padded bikini top. Like what? I just don't understand. I don't get it. <laughs> Very odd. Definitely odd for sure. Next is this red and white dress. I saw it and I thought, I love the color. I love the print on the red. I love the little white inlay. Although her shoulders aren't padded, it kind of makes them look a little bit broader, which is great for that 1940 silhouette. I love the belt. And then she goes to like kiss her dad and it is just way too short. Like especially in front of her dad. She would definitely not be wearing something that short. So yeah, pass on that one. Next is this bluish gray dress, which looks great. It looks like a house dress. I love the placement of the belt. The skirt is okay. Um, the hem is perfect. However, there's something that I noticed when they're about to do it and Allie is undressing, you literally get a quick glimpse of what looks like a puka shell necklace. Who put that there? Is this like product placement for Abercrombie and Fitch? I just, I don't get it. <laughs> so odd. If you believe that this might be something else, definitely let me know because I, I'm just like racking my brain. I can't figure out what other piece of jewelry this might be because puka shell necklaces were invented in the 1960s as a cheaper alternative to lays in Hawaii. So yeah, they definitely would not be seen in the 1940s. I can unequivocally say that. Next is her World War II nursing uniform. I love that they got this right. It honestly looks great. American nursing uniforms were made up of a blue pinafore with a nurse's hat with generally like a blouse underneath. And this, this uniform definitely looks based on a historical version of what nurses were wearing in World War II. I feel like they definitely got this from like another movie's costume where they actually did it right because this is kind of out of character for the costumes of the notebook. Next are these suits that Allie and her friends wear when they're exiting university. I love that her two friends have the right silhouette. They have padded shoulders and suit jackets that land at the mid thigh. However, the gray suit jacket, the collar is actually pretty large. I'm assuming right now it is 1942 or three because her love interest that's coming up got injured in the war and I'm assuming he was sent home early. So I'm assuming that the war is not over yet and collars during World War II were rationed to be no more than five inches. And even if the war was over, these regulations on textile manufacturing lasted well into the late 40s in order to kind of mitigate inflation. So yeah, I think the collar on that gray suit is just a tiny bit too big. But other than that, I, I do like those two characters pieces of clothing. They do look period appropriate. However, when they pan to Allie, her shoulders are definitely way too rounded. Oh, and also I want to mention about the hair. The hair on the two extras, like her two friends, it's too long and it's too straight. The hair would be much more structured, like I said, for the first outfit. Next, we have this beautiful pink and red suit. She is completely decked out with all the most beautiful accessories. Her hat, her bag, her gloves, her shoes are all beautiful and lovely. If it was the 1950s. 
The pencil skirt or sheath dress did not become popular until the 1950s when Dior created the H line dress. Suits of the 1940s known as siren suits were slightly masculine, practical, and military-esque. Like I said before, suit jackets generally fell below the hips and were much looser than the pencil skirts of the 1950s. But she is finally wearing stockings, so I will definitely give her points for that. It's also kind of amazing how she has all these beautiful shoes when shoes for all people were rationed to three shoes per year. And in 1944, it was rationed to two shoes per year. There were some shoes that were ration free. They were made out of cork, raffia, straw. And that's why wedges were so popular, like I mentioned before. However, I would have liked to see her re-wearing some stuff with maybe different separates and same shoes. That would have been nice. Next, we have this lovely burgundy dress. I love the netted hat and the gloves. However, I'm questioning whether she would have been able to get leather gloves during this time when leather was so heavily rationed in the United States. So I'm really questioning whether she would have been able to acquire that so easily for one specific outfit. The shoes are perfect. I feel like these might be original 1940 shoes, actually. 1940 shoes were somewhat chunky and sling back peep toe shoes were actually super popular. Now, what kind of characterizes the 1940s peep toe from other decades is that the peep toe is super, super tiny. And here you can absolutely see how tiny it is. So I'm really wondering if these are an original pair of 1940 shoes. And of course the dress is too tight. If it was just a little bit looser, that would have been more accurate to the 1940s. It looks like it looks to be a pencil dress. Lastly, we come to the blue dress, which is probably the most popular dress in the movie. It's a beautiful dress. However, I wish the shoulders were again padded and the skirt a bit fuller. And maybe if the buttons could come down to the bottom of the hem, that would be great. However, the shoes look to be appropriate, just like in the last one. They're platform slingbacks and and very fitting for the time. <laughs> also in the scene, her hair is like quintessentially 2000s does vintage. So yeah, the hair in this whole entire movie is nothing to write home about. Overall, I would give this movie probably like a, um, a C minus maybe or a C. They got so many things wrong that they could have easily gotten right, but I feel like they did it just for sex appeal, which is basically every movie from the 2000s. I feel like the majority of the clothes would have been more fitting for the 1950s. That is all I have for this video. And so next week I will be reconstructing the blue dress from the notebook. However, I'm going to be making it historically accurate. So if you're excited to see a notebook reconstruction, but it being historically accurate, join me next week. And subscribe if you want. Have a good week otherwise, bye.